Hey guys, it's me Chris. I'm here out at the Spokane River. The water level is kind of low right now because it is mid August. No, it's it's September. It's September 2nd now. Yeah. Um, today I have to show you and talk about this really cool device that I've been excited about for uh, almost a year. It is the Clockwork Pi U console. It's right here in my hand. It looks kind of like a clipboard. <laughs> You know, I've got the orange vest, I've got the clipboard, I got a tripod that I just set up. I must look like a construction worker or a surveyor or something like that, but I'm not. I'm just a vlogger and I'm here to talk about the Clockwork Pi U Console R01. It's Risk V64. I think the V in there is for uh, I think it's a Roman numeral for five. Uh, Risk five is kind of a new uh, new processor architecture. There's very little support for you know, mainstream applications. For example, a web browser. That's right, I cannot browse the web on this device unless I'm using something in the command line. Luckily, there are several command line browsers on Linux. I've taken a liking to Lynx 2. Its interface is simple. I can use the up and down arrow keys to go to the next URL on the page, and then the left and right are for back and forward browsing. The Clockwork Pi U console, it's a new device that started shipping about a month ago. This device I pre-ordered October 2022, so it's taken about 10 months for the order to be fulfilled. Assembly was an enjoyable challenge, thanks to the Lego-like instructions. My first impressions of this device are very positive. The buttons are very clicky, it's very pleasing to click. Uh, I showed this to my younger sister and she said, oh, you could do ASMR with those, with that keyboard. <laughs> I do have one minor gripe with the space bar, and that is it must be pressed right in the center. If you're off to the left or the right, you have the possibility of just pushing and squishing and you'll hit the backstop, but you're not going to activate the underlying push button. Battery life, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. This device doesn't actually come with a battery. It requires two 18650 batteries. And let me take that back. It doesn't actually require batteries. I forgot to order battery cells when my device shipped. And so I got the device without any batteries. So I thought, oh, let me just try to run this off, off some battery banks that I have. And I was doing that just fine. I have a 2.6 amp hour battery bank and I was able to run this thing for over 24 hours. And that's doing intensive work. I was trying to compile some software so the CPU was just pegged at 100% the entire time, and this thing ran for 24 hours. For that reason, I think this device is really good for portability and doing certain computing tasks. Speaking of tasks, you gotta kind of reel back your expectations if you buy the RISC V64 device. Because this architecture is so new, there's a lot of software that doesn't run on here. And also, there is no graphic acceleration. This thing comes pre-installed with GIMP, I'm not opening it ever again because it runs so slowly. Startup takes too long. I don't know. It's at least five minutes and you, it's not even usable yet. So GIMP is just out of the question. No image editing on this, no video editing, web browsing, no graphical web browsing, no. You could still web browse on the command line. One of the first things I tried to install in here was old school RuneScape. I thought, oh yeah, it's, it's an old game, so the graphic requirements won't be very much. But unfortunately, because this thing lacks graphic acceleration, because of the RISC V64 processor, uh, load times were incredibly slow. I could actually install the game just fine, but running it, that was another story. It took almost an hour to get to the menu where music starts playing and then the music was skipping a lot and then i get to the point where i have to log in using an account and it gave me a url to open in a web browser and at that point i kind of gave up i'm like um this is not worth it i cannot wait one hour to play the game every time i want to play it so uh this is the wrong device for games at this point in time music music actually plays really nicely on this thing the internal speakers have a little bit of an echo to them, so for vocals I thought it was not good, but for music itself, it, it seemed like it gave it kind of a bass boost, and I think it sounded good. Of course, I could plug in headphones, and that way it would sound even better. Uh, CMUS, is, it, that's spelled C-M-U-S, is a command line interface music player, and that runs perfectly on this. I was really happy with that. Oh, speaking of audio only, I was able to, to listen to Twitch live streams using Streamlink 
and CVLC media player. I could keep in touch with friends using Matrix. There's a great command line interface for Matrix. It's called GoMux. And that was able to install on this just fine because it runs Python. It, it's coded in Python. There's a few language barriers on this device, and that sounds funny to say, but uh, Node.js is a no-go. And I've also had problems running Rust applications on here that require OpenSSL. Compiling on this device is not a good idea. I think it makes more sense to cross-compile on a, like an AMD64 desktop and compile packages for this device uh, and then transfer the packages to this device. I have not successfully been able to compile any software that I was interested in, one of which was TWT. It brings up Twitch chat on terminal interface. I have not been able to get that to run on this device. However, there is a good workaround. When I'm at home, I could SSH into my desktop computer from this device and run any command line programs on my desktop device and view them through here. That's great. It works great doing that. So I think this device is perfect for uh, logging in via SSH or Mosh and running tasks on a remote computer. I think it's great for that. I think uh, I will use, continue to use it for that, and I will continue to experiment with RISC v64 because I think there's a lot I could do that I normally do on a desktop if I use specialized software that will get me the data I'm interested in on the terminal. This comes pre-installed with Doom, actually, but it's not playable. Well, it's playable on very small resolutions. If I make it full screen, the frame rate is just so bad. It's not fun. Uh, <laughs> but I could do it at low resolutions if I really get my eyes close to the screen and squint a little bit. <laughs> but again, it's just not good for games. It's not good for games at this point. Uh, hopefully that changes in the future. Maybe someone can write some graphics acceleration libraries. I don't know. That's probably a difficult thing to do. I imagine that's a difficult thing to do. I love the stand on this. There's a little metal stand. Right, so this device has limitations, but I think all around it's a joy to use. Uh, <laughs> You know, I could get off my butt and like lay down on my belly and be on the on the computer still and doing tasks. So it's it's it gets me off my butt. Yeah. <laughs> this was my one week first impressions of this device. I'm going to continue to work with it and try new things and see what capabilities I can squeeze out of it. And I'll keep you posted on that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.